dear students welcome once again in today's class i will be discussing on diagonalization of a square matrix before i discuss diagonalization of a square matrix let me consider another example on finding the dominant eigen value and the corresponding eigen vector of a matrix so let me consider this example determine the largest eigen value and the corresponding eigen vector of the matrix by taking initial eigen vector 1 1 1 correct to two decimals given the matrix a is 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 2 minus 1 0 1 1 minus 1 2 0 1 minus 1 okay so I, as a the solution part let me consider the given initial eigen vector as x dot so let x dot be equal to 1 1 1 1 then as a first approximation <coughs> x1 is computed with a x dot that is multiplication of a and x dot which is equal to the matrix a into x dot x dot is 1 1 1 1 so when we multiply carefully we get row by column right? this row first row this column that will give you 1 2 Oh, minus one zero two minus one is one. Similarly, minus one plus two minus one so zero. This is uh, <coughs> zero zero uh, zero minus one plus two. So this plus one. So I get one zero one. So one being the largest, we can write it as one into. We take out one outside. So it will be one into one zero one. So let me call this as lambda one x one, where lambda one is the first approximation to the eigen value, dominant eigen value, and x one is the correct first approximation to the corresponding eigen vector. Now, as a second second approximation, x two is computed like this: a into x one, and uh, after multiplying a and x one, we obtain the column matrix two. Minus two two, so two being the largest entry. So taking out two, we get two into one minus one one. So we call this as we write this as lambda two x two. Lambda two is the second approximation to the eigen value, and x two is the second approximation to the corresponding eigen vector. Similarly, x three <coughs> is equal to a into x two. That will give you after carefully after multiplying carefully. The column matrix three minus four three. So here we have to observe very carefully. Numerically largest value is four. When you take the absolute value, four becomes the largest. So that value, that uh, entry should be taken outside. So four into so three by four point seven five is minus one point seven five, and we call this as lambda three x three. So lambda three is the largest uh, third approximation to the largest eigen value, and x three is the corresponding uh, approx third approximation to the corresponding eigen vector. Uh, similarly, we compute x four, and we after taking out the numerically largest value, the table should be minus three point five. So three point five comes out, and uh, the column matrix is point seven one minus one point seven one. So we call this as lambda four x four. So lambda four is the fourth approximation to the eigen value, and x four is the fourth approximation to the corresponding eigen vector. Similarly, we compute x five that will hit three point four two times point seven zero minus one zero point seven zero. Here also minus three point four two happens to be the numerically largest value among all the three entries. So that we call it as lambda five x y, the fifth approximation to the lambda, and x y is the fifth approximation to the corresponding eigen vector. So likewise, we compute x six. X six will <coughs> simplify to three point four zero times point seven zero minus one point seven zero. We call this as lambda six x six. So three point four zero is the lambda six, and this is your x six. And then we compute x seven <coughs> a into x six. This x six. Then this will simplify to 
Similarly, as in the previous case, 3.40 with eigenvalue vector 0.7 minus 1, 0.7. Now, compare the uh, seventh and the sixth iterations, they are almost exactly the same up to two decimal places. So, since, so we conclude that, uh, we conclude that the dominant or the largest eigenvalue of this matrix is 3.40 and 0.7 minus 1, 0.7 is the corresponding eigenvector. So, we can conclude like this. Since the sixth and seventh iterations are the same up to two decimals, the largest eigenvalue of A is lambda is equal to 3.40 and the corresponding eigenvector is 0 0.70 minus 1 0 0.70 transpose. Okay. So now let me continue with diagonalization of a square matrix. Diagonalization of a square matrix. Uh, this is the last part of the module 5 of calculus and a linear algebra, which is the first semester mathematics course. So, let me define the diagonalization of a square matrix. Let A be, let A be an n by n matrix. That means A is a square matrix of order n. Of order n. Then, then A is said to be diagonalizable that A is said to be A is said to be diagonalizable lizable if there exists an invertible matrix if that exists an invertible invertible matrix P called modal matrix of A called modal Modal matrix, modal matrix, such that, such that P inverse A P, P inverse into A into B A is equal to D, where D is diagonal. Where D, where capital D is a diagonal matrix, diagonal 
back up. Is a diagonal. To reduce a matrix, that is a square matrix, to diagonal form, the steps involved are as follows. So let me write the working procedure here. To reduce, to reduce, to reduce, a matrix to of course a square matrix matrix to diagonal matrix or diagonal form diagonal matrix diagonal matrix the steps involved are the steps Involved. Involved. Ah, the following. As the first step, we find the eigenvalues of the matrix. So, by solving characteristic equation, solve. Solve. The characteristic equation and find the eigenvalues. So, the characteristic equation characteristic equation characteristic equation and find the eigenvalues and find the eigenvalues I will balance. <coughs> then the step two. Step two. Find the linearly independent eigenvectors of these eigenvalues. Find. Find the linearly independent linearly independent linearly independent eigenvectors of these eigenvalues. Eigenvectors of these eigenvalues of these eigenvalues. Okay. As a step three, step three, write the modal matrix. Write the modal matrix modal matrix P whose columns are the eigenvectors whose columns whose columns are the eigenvectors eigenvectors Step four. Find the inverse of P. Find the inverse of the modal matrix P. The last step. Step five. Compute P inverse AP. To obtain the required diagonal matrix. Compute. Compute. P inverse 
into A into B to octal to octal the required to octal the required diagonal matrix diagonal matrix now these are the steps to be followed in order to <coughs> diagonalize the given matrix so let me consider an example on diagonalization of a square matrix Reduce the matrix. Reduce the matrix. Five minus three minus six two into diagonal four. into diagonal 1 okay let us apply this procedure as mentioned in step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 and step 5 and finding diagonal form of the given matrix the given matrix by a let a be the given square matrix of order to r2 by 2 matrix minus 6 2 this is the given matrix let us call this matrix by a in order to find characteristic equation from which we can obtain eigen values so let me define the characteristic matrix of a for this for the given matrix a for the given matrix a for the given matrix a for the given matrix Yes. Yeah. The characteristic matrix. Characteristic matrix. Characteristic matrix of Y. Yeah. Y yeah. is matrix Y yeah. minus lambda times. Where lambda is scalar, so this is equal to lambda times i. So the matrix A is five minus three minus six two minus lambda times i. I is the identity matrix of order two one zero zero one. So this will be five minus three minus six two minus one into lambda zero into lambda zero 
zero into lambda zero, lambda into one, lambda. So this is going to be five minus lambda. So we subtract two elements with the corresponding subtraction of elements. Five should be subtracted with lambda only. Minus three with zero, minus six with zero, and two with lambda. Corresponding element should be subtracted. Five minus lambda minus three minus zero is minus three. Minus six minus zero is minus six. Two minus lambda. Two minus lambda. Now this is the characteristic matrix of A. Characteristic equation of A is determinant of A minus lambda i equal to zero. Characteristic matrix. Characteristic. Characteristic matrix. Uh, equation characteristic equation of a a is determinant a minus lambda i is equal to zero determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero <coughs> so therefore therefore That is determinant. That is determinant five minus lambda minus three minus six two minus lambda is equal to zero. So expanding this, you obtain five minus lambda. Into two minus lambda minus kt equal to zero. So multiplying this, we get lambda square minus two lambda minus five lambda minus seven lambda. Then uh, plus ten minus kt equal to Lambda square minus seven lambda minus y equal to zero. So we can easily factorize this, or we have to find the uh, roots of this equation. So we can easily factorize lambda plus one lambda minus y equal to zero. So lambda is equal to minus one, lambda is equal to plus y. Are they? Eigen values of A. The roots of the Cauchy equation are the eigen values of A. Are the eigen values of A. Eigen values of A. Now the next step is we have to find eigen vector corresponding to lambda is equal to minus one. Eigen vector corresponding to lambda is equal to y. So let me take it as case one. Our first case: the eigen vector corresponding to lambda is equal to minus one. The eigen vector vector corresponding corresponding to lambda is equal to Minus one is the non-zero solution of is the non-zero non-zero solution non-zero solution of a minus lambda times i x one is equal to zero. Where x one is a non-zero vector, where x one a non-zero vector with the entries that are say x one, x two, both x one and x two are not equal to zero, are a non-zero vector, a non-zero vector. 
non zero vector x1 is not equal to zero okay. now i know what is a minus lambda i phi minus phi minus lambda a minus lambda is this so phi minus lambda minus 3 minus 6 2 minus lambda times x with the address x1 x2 is equal to 0 so let me write 0 as 0 vector But lambda is minus 1. But lambda is minus 1. Now substitute the value of lambda here. So this is 6. Lambda is minus 1. So 5 plus 1 is 6. Minus 3. Minus 6. Minus 6. Then 2 plus 1. That is 3. 3 into x1, x2 is equal to 0 is equal to 0 okay. now multiply to get simultaneous equation so by multiply minus 6x1 minus 3x2 equal to 0 minus 6x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 0 okay or this is 2x1 minus x2 equal to 0 minus 2x1 plus x2 equal to 0 so both are same this is equivalent to single equation now this is equivalent to equivalent to single equation 2x1 minus x2 equal to 0. So this gives infinite number of solution. So one such solution is x is equal to 1, x2 is equal to 2. Satisfies this equation. And x is 1, 2, minus 2 equal to 0. So therefore the eigenvector Corresponding, corresponding to lambda is equal to minus 1 is therefore eigenvector corresponding to lambda is equal to minus 1 is 1 2 eigenvector corresponding to lambda minus 1 eigenvector eigenvector corresponding 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 to eigenvalue lambda is equal to minus. So let me find out eigenvector corresponding to lambda is equal to eight. That is our next case. The case two. The eigenvector. The eigen vector corresponding to lambda is equal to eight corresponding corresponding to lambda is equal to plus eight is the non-zero solution. Is the non-zero solution non-zero solution of a minus lambda i? Let us say another non-zero vector x2 x2 is equal to zero, where x2 with the address x1, x2 
not both of them zero or a non zero vector a non zero vector a non zero vector so a minus lambda is this phi minus so therefore phi minus lambda phi minus lambda minus 3 minus 6 2 minus lambda into x2 with the address x1 x2 is equal to 0 so i write 0 as 0 but lambda but lambda is equal to yeah so therefore therefore phi minus y minus 3 minus 3 this is also minus 3 that minus 6 2 minus 8 minus 6 minus 6 into into x1 x2 is equal to 0 0 0 0 Now multiply. So this is minus three x one minus three x two equal to zero. Minus six x one minus six x two is equal to zero. R x one plus x two is zero. X one plus x two is Now this is equivalent to this is equivalent to equivalent to x one plus x two equal to so one solution non-zero solution is x one is equal to uh, one. X two is equal to minus. So therefore, X two is X two is one minus one. I can get that corresponding to lambda is equal to five. I can vector. I can vector. I can vector. Corresponding, corresponding to lambda is equal to eight. Corresponding to lambda is equal to eight. Lambda is equal to eight. Now, the next step is writing. The modal matrix. The modal matrix P. The modal matrix. Matrix P is P is equal to formed by the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda is equal to minus one and lambda is equal to eight. So P is x one is one two x two is one minus one one minus one. So therefore P inverse P inverse finding inverse of a two by two matrix is very simple. Find the determinant of P. That is minus one minus two minus three. So one divided by minus three into interchange these two elements. So minus one one 
and change the signs of these two elements minus 2 minus 1. So this is the inverse of a matrix P. So what we have to do? Find the determinant of this. Determinant of P is uh, 1, 1, 2 minus 1. 1, 1, 2 minus 1. So this is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So 1 by minus 3 times interchange these two elements minus 1 plus 1 change the signs of these two elements minus 2 minus 1 ok <coughs> so now compute last step p inverse a into p that is p inverse is 1 divided by minus 3 into a the given matrix a is 5 minus 3 minus 6 2 5 minus 3 minus 6 2 into p inverse so p inverse p inverse is minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 1 a is 5 minus 3 minus 6 plus 2 into p p is 1 1 2 minus 1 so first we shall multiply these two matrices 2 by 2 matrices now the matrix multiplication 5 into 1 plus minus 3 into 2 so this is 1 divided by minus 3 minus 3 1 divided by minus 3 into so this I write as it is minus 1 minus 1 uh, ok or uh, you can make this plus 3 and multiply this by minus 1 so 1 1 2 minus 1 2 minus 1 2 minus 1 into this into this so 5 minus 3 is 2 5 minus 6 that is minus 1 minus 1 5 plus 3 that is 8 minus 6 plus 4 minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 minus 6 minus 2 minus 8 so this is minus 8 now let us multiply this and this so if you carefully multiply you get 1 by 3 times minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 plus 8 minus 8 0 minus 2 plus 2 0 16 16 plus 8 24 16 plus 8 is 24 now divide by 3 so p inverse a p is equal to divide each element by 3 minus 1 0 0 8 diagonal matrix a diagonal So this shows that A is diagonal. We can always we can notice that these diagonal elements minus 1 and 8 are nothing but the eigenvalues of the given matrix.
Now let me consider another problem. Second problem. Reduced bandwidth. Reduce the bandwidth. A is equal to minus one, three, minus two, four. In the diagonal form. In the diagonal form. In the diagonal form. Okay. Okay. For the given matrix A, for the given Lambda square of 
to simplify lambda square minus 4 lambda plus lambda minus 3 lambda minus 4 plus 6 equal to 0 or this is lambda square minus 3 lambda plus 2 equal to 0. So I can easily factorize this. This is lambda minus 1 into lambda minus 2 equal to 0. Okay. The solve this equation lambda is equal to 1 and 2 are the eigenvalues of lambda is equal to 1 lambda is equal to 2 are the eigenvalues of eigenvalues of the matrix. Now the second step let us find the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda is equal to 1 and lambda is equal to 2. Okay. The eigenvector, the eigenvector corresponding, corresponding to lambda is equal to 1 is the non-zero solution is the non-zero non-zero solution solution of a minus lambda i x1 is equal to zero a minus lambda i times x1 equal to 0. But a minus lambda i is this minus 1 minus 1 minus lambda 3 minus 2 4 minus lambda into where x1 is a non-zero vector with n trace x1, x2, a non-zero vector, a non-zero vector, a non-zero vector, a non-zero vector. Okay. So this is x1, x2 is equal to, so I write 0 as a 0 vector. 0, 0. But lambda is 1. But lambda is 1. So minus 1, minus 1, you get minus 2. 3, minus 2. Lambda is 1, so this is 3. 3 into x1 x2 is equal to 0, 0 is equal to 0, 0. Okay. Now, multiply, we get minus 2 x1 plus 3 x2 is equal to 0 minus 2 x1 plus 3 x2 equal to 0. So both are same. So this is equivalent to this is equivalent to this is equivalent to minus 2x1 plus 3x2 equal to 0. can be 3 
and x2 is 2. Just look at here. When x1 is 3 minus 6, when x2 is 2, 6, it is balanced. So therefore, x1 is 3 and 2. Eigenvector, eigenvector corresponding to corresponding lambda is equal to 1. Eigenvector corresponding to lambda is equal to 1. Now let me consider another case. The eigenvector, the eigenvector corresponding corresponding to lambda is equal to two is the non-zero solution. Is the non zero solution of a minus lambda i times a non-zero vector x2 is equal to zero where x2 is x1 x2 a non-zero vector a non-zero vector, a non-zero vector. Okay. So a minus lambda i is this, minus 1, minus lambda 3, minus 2, 4 minus lambda times x2, x2 is x1, x2 is equal to 0. At that time, write it as a 0 vector. 0 vector. But lambda, but lambda is 2. But lambda is 2. So therefore, you get minus 1, minus 2 minus 3 3 minus 2 4 minus 2 is 2 into x1 x2 is equal to 0 is equal to 0 now multiply we get minus 3x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 0 minus 2x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 0 or minus x1 plus x2 equal to 0 here also minus x1 plus x2 equal to 0 so this is equivalent to this is equivalent to this is equivalent to minus x1 plus x2 equal to 0. Therefore, x1 is equal to 1, x2 is equal to 1. 1 minus 1 plus 1, 0. Okay. So therefore, x2 
corresponding corresponding to lambda is equal to now the modal matrix the modal matrix p is constructed with the with columns as the eigen vectors x1 x2 so p is 
So during my lectures, I have covered most of the previous university question paper problems in addition to interesting and important problems. VTU through e Shikshana program is providing a quality video lectures and study material to all the students of affiliated colleges for the benefit of the students. I wholeheartedly congratulate VTU for initiating this program. I once again thank the authorities of VTU for providing me this opportunity. In case of any doubts, clarifications with regard to my lectures, you can always reach out to me through my mail ID. I am Dr. V. Ramchandramurthy, Professor and Head, Department of Basic Sciences, RR Institute of Technology, Chikabadara, Bangalore. My email address says the following. ramachandramurthyv at gmail.com So I wish you all the best for the upcoming examination. In case of any doubt, clarification of my lectures, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Once again, the link, this is my mail address. You can post your questions and ask for clarifications. So thank you for now.